Star Walker Studios presents Game Master's Journey, your multi-dimensional RPG podcast. Hello, fellow gamer. Welcome to episode 141 of Game Master's Journey, your multi-dimensional RPG podcast. I'm Lex Starwalker. On this show, we discuss the craft and art of game mastering. Not only do I pass along any knowledge I've gained over 25 plus years of running RPGs, I also share wisdom from guest GMs and listener GMs like you. Today, I'll discuss an excellent TED Talk I saw about how playing RPGs like D&D is good for us. Before that, I'll discuss Wizards of the Coast's product replacement policy for D&D 5th edition. Their website is a little misleading, and the process is much easier than you may have been led to believe. Speaking of Wizards of the Coast, I wanted to let you know about a great free resource if you run D&D or another fantasy RPG. Almost every month, Wizards releases free maps for D&D. Oftentimes, these are some of the very nice maps that are included in their published adventures and campaigns. Now, they release these as part of their Dragon Plus app, which if you don't know anything about the Dragon Plus app, it's a, I think, feeble attempt to (laughs) recapture some of the magic of Dragon Magazine that those of us who remember Dragon Magazine probably miss. I know I miss it and, and Dungeon Magazine. However, I can't honestly recommend the Dragon Plus app to you. It's more ads and propaganda than anything. There's very little of real content in it. And the app itself is pretty terrible. It takes forever to load. It's not easy to navigate. It's just not a good experience. However, you can access the content of the app on the internet using your web browser. Among that content, the free maps that they release every month. And I find myself scratching my head why this is even part of the Dragon Plus app, because if you're using the app on your phone, um, what good is it to download maps onto your phone from the app, assuming you can even do that? I don't know. I haven't messed with Dragon Plus enough to know if you can download from there. I would assume so. But even if you can, what good does that do on your phone? You're still going to have to transfer it to your computer or your printer or something so you can print them off or, or put them on Roll20 or whatever. They don't do you any good on your phone. So, you know, this stuff should really be on their website, which it sort of is. So I have a link for you in the show notes at starwalkerstudios.com to the free maps for, what is it, January issue, I think. And uh, it's on the internet. Uh, It's dragonmag.com. It's it's a different site than the D&D website. Um, But you can follow that link. You can see the free maps for this month, and you can also find the free maps for the previous months. And those are just images that you can download and then do with what you will. So they're pretty nice maps. And especially if you're running any of Wizards Adventures for D&D, you might find at least some of the maps from your adventure in a higher res version on on the site than what's given in the books. Of course, you can get the maps from the cartographers themselves, but they're not free. So these are free. So again, head to the website, starwalkerstudios.com and head to the show notes for episode 141. And I'll have a link to this and you can go and check out all the maps and download all of them. That's what I do. (laughs) You never know when one might come in handy. And they're nice full color maps. And again, you know, even if you're not playing D&D, if you're playing some other fantasy game, you could still use these maps. So while I'm talking about starwalkerstudios.com, that is a great place to go. For anything Game Master's Journey related, all the show notes for all the episodes are there. Almost every episode has helpful links to take you to more information about things I discuss on the show. So check out starwalkerstudios.com. Also, you can find the many ways that you can support Game Master's Journey, some of which don't even cost you any of your own money. How cool is that? All right, so I have some interesting topics to cover today. So without further ado... Let's proceed with the show. Today, I wanted to share an experience I had recently with Wizards of the Coast customer service in regards to my monster manual. 
So as you may or may not be aware, there were some problems, it seems, with the first printing of the Player's Handbook, Dungeon Master's Guide, and Monster Manual. Specifically, people experience pages start falling out due to some problem with the binding. Now, from everything I've been able to see online, it looks like this problem, whatever it was, was fixed in later printing. So it's only a problem with the first print run of those books. So I follow Chris Perkins on Twitter, and I've seen him tweet more than once in response to people who ask about this, saying that wizards will replace defective books. So I thought that was pretty cool of them and and good to know because I could tell from the bindings on my books that it was inevitable that the day would come when pages would start falling out. You could just tell by looking at the binding. And sure enough, a few weeks ago, pages started coming out of my monster manual. So I went to Wizard's site to find out what would be involved in getting my book replaced And they have a page just for product replacement on their site. And you can go there. I'll put a link to it in the show notes at starwalkerstudios.com. And when you get to that page, in the left column, there are some of their different IPs. And you click on Dungeons & Dragons. And then it takes you to the specific return policy for Dungeons & Dragons. And it's a pretty involved process, though I don't think unreasonable the process described on on the site. And basically, you need to email them through the site, through their email form, and tell them what the problem is. Provide a picture of the damage of your book, so a picture of the pages coming out, and also a picture of the copyright page, which is the backside of the title page of the book, which shows which print run it is. And then the website tells you that that once you do that, Wizards will get back with you and eventually you will need to ship your book to them. Now, they will pay for the shipping, but you need to ship the book to them along with your original sales receipt for the book and a letter explaining again, you know, what the problem is, blah, 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 blah. You send that to them and then they will send you a replacement book. So again, it doesn't seem unreasonable. It doesn't seem unreasonable that they would want the old copy, you know, just to prevent people from from scamming them. It doesn't seem unreasonable that they would want the sales receipt, although it could be rough if you're someone like me who bought the book a year or more ago and now the pages are falling out and you want it replaced, maybe you don't have the sales receipt. Now luckily for me, I bought the book on Amazon. So you know, you have all your sales receipts forever on Amazon. So I was able to to find the order on Amazon and, and print uh, a receipt for it. But if I would have bought that book at my local game store, there's no way I would still have the receipt for it a year later. So I thought that was kind of unfortunate, but but again, not unreasonable. So I mentioned this on Twitter and I was just asking for people who'd gone through this process, how long did it take from the time you sent your book to Wizards to, you know, when you received your new book. Because my concern was, I only have one Monster Manual and I'm running D&D. And so, you know, if I send my Monster Manual to Wizards and I'm without it for a week or a few weeks or a month or a couple months, it's going to be kind of hard to run D&D during that time without my Monster Manual. So I just thought I'd ask Twitter and, and see what people told me as far as, you know, how long does this process take? Because I imagine it could take anywhere from a couple weeks to even a couple months once you figure the time to ship the product to wizards for them to receive it and process it and then for them to ship a new one, a new book to you. I mean, that could easily take two months and that's if you're in the US. So as I was asking this on Twitter and getting responses, I had some people tell me that you actually don't have to jump through all those hoops in order to get your book replaced by Wizards. And I eventually actually heard from from someone on Wizards customer support team, whoever manages their Twitter, who also said that all I need to do is email them with the picture of the damage and the picture of the title page or the backside of the title page, which at this point I had already done that. I was waiting for their response and I was just curious how long this would take. So that was really interesting, and and I requested to the Wizards 
Twitter account that, hey, it'd be nice if you guys would update the information on your website because that's not what the information on your website says. So I thought I would discuss this on the show today because I imagine there are quite a number of you out there who have first printing of these books, who have pages falling out, and who have not gotten your replacement book because you went to the website and you saw this process and like me, you didn't want to be without your monster manual or your DMG or your player's handbook for weeks or even months. And maybe you don't have your sales receipt from whenever you bought the the book, et cetera, et cetera. So here is how you actually can get your book replaced by wizards. This is not what it says on their website, but this is what I did and this is how it worked for me. And I've heard from other people online who have had the same experience. So first of all, you're going to go to the link that I'm providing in the show notes where you can send an email to Wizards customer service. So this will take you, and I'll, I'll have a direct link to the email form in the show notes at starwalkerstudios.com. This will take you to an email form on our website where you can send them an email. Now, a little tip here, you're going to want to, in the product dropdown menu on the email form, you're gonna want to select Dungeons and & Dragons and then select D&D tabletop role-playing game as the subcategory below the Dungeons and Dragons category in that product drop down box. It won't let you send an email until, until you do that. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take a picture of the damage in your book, a picture of the pages coming out or, or whatever the problem is. You're also going to want to take a picture of the copyright page, which again is the backside of the ti title page. It's the page that has the actual copyright and it will say first printing. You want to send them those two pictures. You also want to send them your mailing address, your email address, and that's it. You're going to, pretty soon after you send that form email, you're going to get an automated response from Wizards just saying that they've received your email and that they'll be getting back to you. Then at some time after that, you will get an email from an actual person at Wizards who is going to help you. For me, it took about a couple days for someone to get back to me. And at that point, they sent me the book. I did not have to send them my copy. I did not have to provide a sales receipt. All I had to do was send that original email with the picture of the copyright page and the picture of the damage and give them my mailing address. That was all I had to do. So this is actually really awesome. And this is the best product replacement I've ever encountered because not only did I get a brand new monster manual in the mail? Not only did I get the latest printing that not only isn't going to hopefully have the binding issues, but also has all of the errata and all the corrections worked into it. So I don't have to worry about the monster manual errata anymore, at least up through six printing. Not only did I, did I get that brand new spanking book, but I didn't have to get rid of my old monster manual. In fact, I still have it, which means that I didn't have to worry about trying to run games without a monster manual while I was waiting for this book to arrive. Now, the person that emailed me from Wizards said that it could take as long as four to six weeks for my new monster manual to arrive. However, for me personally, I'm in Bellingham, Washington. It took just over a week from when I got the email from Wizards to when I had my new monster manual in my hand. Now, obviously, depending on where you are in the country, you know, that could vary. It could take less time. It could take more time. So when they tell you four to six weeks, that's kind of worst case scenario, I think. You know, they're covering their asses there. Chances are good you'll have it sooner than that. Now, I do want to say that according to their website, they will replace these for people outside of the United States, unless you're in Russia. If you're in Russia, you're out of luck for whatever reason they can't or won't ship product replacements to Russia. Now, I don't know if you're in Canada or some other country, if there is more involved in the process for you than there was for me. But at least for me in the US, I did not have to provide a sales receipt. I did not have to ship my old book to them. I didn't have to pay shipping for them to send the book to me. I didn't have to pay anything. All I had to do was send that email with a couple pictures in it, easy peasy, and I got a new improved book where hopefully the pages aren't going to fall out. So I'm still waiting, you know, on my monster or my player's handbook and my dungeon master's guide. Um, it's pretty obvious that at some point pages will start falling out of those. 
and then I'll get those re- replaced. Now, I will say that, you know, it, it discusses more on their site what they will replace and, and whatnot. I'm talking about the fifth edition books. They're not going to replace books from older editions, but you can read more about that on the site. So again, you know, their website is very misleading, seems to have a lot of hoops to it, but you don't really have to go through all that. So, you know, if you're someone that, that you're having pages fall out of your books and you haven't uh, gotten your replacement because it seemed like too much hassle or you didn't want to be without your book or whatever, you don't have to deal with any of that. And the process is really easy and simple and you get to keep your book. So there you go. And I just want to send huge kudos to Wizards. I've dealt with product replacement with, with other products, with other companies And this is the most convenient and the most customer-friendly product replacement I've ever seen. And I'm really impressed that they make it so easy to do. I just wish that someone would get around to correcting their website so that they're not giving people the wrong impression of what's involved. Because, you know, like I've said, I suspect that there's a lot of people who went somewhere and paid money to have their book rebound or spiral bound or something or people that that just went and bought another copy or people that are just putting up with a book that have pages falling out because they thought that they'd have to jump through all these hoops to get a new book turns out you don't have to this is shane from the total party thrill podcast and you're listening to lex starwalker on game master's journey I want to give a quick shout out to the patrons of Starwalker Studios. The support of the patrons makes this show possible. If you enjoy Game Master's Journey and you'd like to give a little back, becoming a patron is a great way to do so. Patrons get some cool perks like game material I make for Primordia and access to a special monthly podcast I produce just for the patrons. I'd also like to give a huge shout out and thank you to my tier four patron, Mr. Steve Strickland. Let's hear it for Steve. You the man. Thank you so much, Steve, and thank you to all the patrons. You can find out more about becoming a patron by clicking on the Patreon button at the top of the show notes at starwalkerstudios.com. I thought I'd change gears a little bit on the show today and talk about something a little bit different than, than what we've been talking about lately. And today I want to talk about how playing role-playing games can help you learn to value differences. Differences with your fellow humans on this planet. I recently watched a TED Talk by Ethan Gilsdorf on how RPGs like D&D can be good for you. This is a pretty short short talk. I think it's less than half an hour. I highly recommend that you check it out. I'll have a a link to it in the show notes at starwalkerstudios.com. It was a great talk. Like I said, not very long. And I learned quite a bit from it. Now, I've always personally believed that there were many benefits to playing RPGs and running RPGs. You know, some of the ones that, that seem most obvious to me that I've always kind of just accepted are that they can help you become more comfortable doing simple math calculations in your head, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, percentages, ratios, etc. Now, of course, this depends on, on the game you're playing or the game you're running. And I think this is more true for a GM than a player. But even a player, if you're playing a game like D&D, where you do these very simple math operations, It can actually help you become much more comfortable doing those things eventually without a calculator or scrap paper or anything like that. I've also always believed that playing role-playing games is a great exercise in creative problem solving. It's a way to put yourself in hypothetical situations and come up with solutions. It's also a great way to make friends. I've made a lot of friends through playing RPGs. And it's a great way just to practice creativity, just to be creative, whether as a GM or a player. So when I watched this talk, I expected to hear those things, and I did. But what surprised me were some of the other benefits that Ethan saw in playing games like D&D. 
these were things that I hadn't thought of before, but when I listened to him talk about them and I thought about them, I completely agree that playing these games helps in these ways. And I think a few of these that he talked about are especially important, especially in our time, (laughs) in our climate, in this day and age. I think some of these lessons are crucially important for everyone to learn. So a few things that I want to talk about today, benefits of playing RPGs, things that we can learn from playing RPGs that I think go hand in hand and are very topical, are learning teamwork, learning to embrace diversity, and learning to see from a different point of view. So let's start with learning teamwork. Most role-playing games, maybe all role-playing games, teach teamwork. In D&D, player characters work together to explore the world, defeat monsters, and grow in wealth, fame, and power. This is built into the framework of the game itself, this sense of teamwork. Think of the classic D&D party consisting of a fighter, a thief, a wizard, and a cleric. Each character is dependent on the others. Each character contributes something specific that's needed by the group that the other characters can't contribute, or at least can't contribute as well. The fighter fights and protects her less armored companions. The thief detects traps and secret doors, disables traps, and is able to scout ahead undetected. The wizard can handle groups of monsters and provides a host of miscellaneous benefits like invisibility, teleportation, etc. The cleric provides healing and protective magic and also can help protect less armored companions. All of these characters have a role to play in the team, and each role is needed. D&D teaches us that you don't need to be good at everything. You just need to be good at your particular role And you can rely on your friends, on your teammates, to cover your shortcomings. Each of you working together as a team are able to accomplish almost anything. Games like D&D teach us that we are much more capable when we work together than when we go it alone. The common wisdom of don't split the party. It teaches us that we don't have to do everything ourselves. It's okay to rely on our friends, our companions, and our allies. So this is important. I can't speak for the rest of the world, but here in the United States, we tend to value individuality. We tend to value people who are strong-willed, people who are self-sufficient, people who can stand alone like a rock in the ocean. But in reality, We all rely and depend on one another. No one is truly self-sufficient in our modern society. We all rely on other people, whether it's people to construct your television for you that you enjoy watching, people to help you with your health, doctors, nurses, EMTs, people to help you with your finances, people to grow the food that you put on your table people to babysit your dog (laughs) or your kids, right? We all rely on other people. No one is an island. We are a community. We are a team. And when you're part of a team, whether that team is an adventuring party in D&D or a basketball team or any other sports ball team, everybody on the team has a job. Everybody has a specialty or a focus, something that they're particularly good at that they excel at and everyone does their part and together the team is successful. The team isn't just one person. The team isn't supported by one Mary Sue person that can do everything perfectly. The team is made up of a group of flawed individual humans who come together and combine their strengths and resources and weaknesses to do something together that none of them could do alone. Teamwork is very important. In addition to teaching us teamwork, games like D&D also teach us to embrace diversity 
and to not be afraid of it. Sure, you could have a party of all humans in a D&D group, but in my experience, it's been much more common to have a mix of humans, elves, dwarves, halflings, etc. These races, or species, are quite different physically and culturally from one another. They have different lifespans, they have different values, what they consider important. You know, an elf has a very different idea of what's important in the world than a dwarf does. Sometimes there are even enmities, for example, often between elves and dwarves. However, despite these differences, these characters learn to work together as a team and even become friends. Gimli and Legolas start out tolerating one another at best, but over time, they become fast friends despite and maybe even partially because of their many differences. Not only does D&D teach us that a party of mixed races can work together, it also teaches us that a diverse party is often stronger than a homogenous one. Humans can't see in the dark, but elves and dwarves can. Elves make excellent archers. Dwarves fight well in heavy armor. Each race in D&D brings some unique ability to the group. The more diversity of races a D&D party has, the more diversity of abilities they have to draw from. The more capable they are of overcoming challenges together as a group. Not only does D&D teach us that there is strength in diversity, it also shows us that the more enlightened people of the world realize this, while the less enlightened don't. PCs will often encounter prejudice in towns and settlements. A human village might look at the elf in the party with suspicion. The elves in a city might shun the half-orc PC. The dwarves in a holdfast don't trust any of the PCs that aren't dwarves. However, the PCs learn to see past this. The human in the group understands that elves and dwarves are more like him than different because he has elf and dwarf companions and friends. PCs begin to see the intolerance of non-adventurers as ignorant and backwards, which it is. So not only do games like D&D teach us the value of teamwork and teach us that a team that embraces diversity is often stronger than a team that is homogenous, they also teach us how to see from another point of view, a point of view different from our own. This is a skill that so few people, especially in the United States, again, I can't speak for other countries, but here in the United States, this is a skill that so few people ever learn in their entire lives. Very few people I know are capable of seeing things from any point of view other than their own. RPGs teach us perhaps the most valuable lesson we can learn on this planet, how to see from a point of view that is very different from our own. When we first start playing RPGs, many of us make characters that are very much like ourselves. Oftentimes, these first characters really are ourselves, transplanted into the world of the game. However, as we get more experienced as role players, many of us branch out and begin playing characters who are very different from ourselves in some way or in many ways. Maybe in real life, I'm a scrawny nerd. I am. So in D&D, I play a muscular barbarian. Maybe I'm shy in real life. So in D&D, I play a charismatic bard. Beyond that, anyone who runs a game as a game master plays many different roles. When we play a character different from ourselves, whether playing a PC as a player or an NPC as a GM, we're trying to see from a different point of view. Sure, I know what Lex, an American human, would do in this particular situation. But what would Legolas the Elf do? This exercise of trying to imagine what someone different from ourselves would think, feel, and do in a given situation, is an extremely important one. And it's an exercise that I'd wager a disturbingly large number of people engage in seldom or never in their lifetime. This practice of putting yourself in someone else's shoes and trying to imagine what they would think, what they would feel, and what they would do 
is important because through it, you can begin to learn empathy. It's fairly easy to empathize with someone exactly like you, someone who thinks the same way you do, who believes the same things that you do. It's pretty easy to empathize with someone like that. However, feeling empathy for someone who's very different from you, who thinks differently than you do, who speaks a different language than you do, who believes different things than you do, is more difficult. And I believe is a skill that is learned and takes practice. It's not something we can naturally do. If human beings were naturally innately capable of empathizing with other people and understanding points of view different from their own, I think the world would be a very different place. When you consider the differences that player characters face in a D&D campaign, differences of species, we talk so much in this world about race, which I'll tell you, in case you don't know, there's no scientific validity whatsoever for the concept of race. Race is a fiction. It's a fable. It's a myth. There is more diversity within a given race, any given race, than there is between any two races. In fact, you can't even define what a race is scientifically. It doesn't exist. So when you consider player characters in a D&D campaign who are actually different species, the difference of, say, a human Homo sapiens compared to a Neanderthal or an Australopithecine or Homo habilis, something that we can't even imagine because the days when we shared this earth with another humanoid species are so far in the past, so far before recorded history that, that we have no memory of it except for perhaps some of our myths and legends some of our boogeymen, perhaps orcs, trolls, and whatnot, came from long, long ago memories of such things, perhaps. But the point is we have no modern experience of this. We have no concept of what it would be like to share a planet with a species similar to us but different. So when you consider your player characters in D&D who represent different species, the differences that we face in the real world seem pretty trivial by comparison. Yes, we do have a wondrous diversity of languages, cultures, etc. in our world. But at the end of the day, we're all human. They're all human languages. They're all human cultures. And as humans, we share far more in common biologically, psychologically, than we have differences. Surely it's easier for us to understand one another than it is for a human to understand an elf or a halfling to understand a dwarf. So today I think that it's more important than it ever has been that we bring these lessons that we learn playing RPGs into the world, into our lives. And even more importantly, that we share these insights with the people around us. It's true that you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. You can talk all day long, but if the person you're talking to isn't willing to listen, isn't willing to accept new ideas or even consider new ideas, then they're not going to change their mind no matter what you say, no matter how many times you say it. So instead of preaching at people, instead focus on what you do instead of what you say. The best way to lead other people is by example. Do your best to promote understanding and empathy by embodying those ideals yourself. Be the change you want to see in the world. Also, when you see inappropriate behavior, take a stand. It's not easy. If it were easy, everybody would do it. It can take courage to confront people. It's far easier to say nothing and not make waves. But we have got to stand up for one another. If you see someone treated unfairly, say something. If you see someone being discriminated against, do something about it. Let others know where you stand.
All right. Well, that is going to wrap up episode 141 of Game Master's Journey. Thank you so much for joining me on my journey this week as a Game Master. Always learning, always growing, always expanding, always trying new things. At least that's how I roll as a GM. Please visit my website at starwalkerstudios.com. There you can find all my contact information, email, Twitter, Google+, Facebook, Pinterest, my YouTube channel, and the Game Master's Journey voicemail where you can leave me a message. If your question or feedback on the voicemail is entertaining or enlightening, you might even hear your message on the show. You can also find a link to the Game Master's Journey community where you can share ideas with other listener GMs. We have a lot of great discussions on the community. It's getting more active all the time. I see new people posting in there every week. Really great. Some GMs are sharing their homebrew worlds. Some GMs are are asking questions or ideas from other GMs and just lots of RPG discussion One thing that I do a lot on the community is I am always on the lookout for any cool inspirational art. Right now, you know, I'm pretty focused on my home world of Primordia or my homebrew world of Primordia. I wish Primordia was my home world. Um, I think I'd be going back to there about now. But alas, I'm I'm an earthling. But anyway, (laughs) or an earther. So I share any cool art that I find. I have an art category in the community. So you can go to that category and scroll through all the art I've been posting for a few years now. Art can be a great inspiration for an adventure or all kinds of things for your game. So uh, I love looking at cool fantasy and science fiction art. And then finally, at StarWalkerStudios.com, you can learn how you can help support the show One great way you can support the show is by becoming a patron. And another great way is making a one-time donation. And another great way is using my Amazon referral link, which you just click on that link. It will take you to Amazon. You can do your shopping on Amazon, buy whatever you're going to buy. Will not cost you anything extra to use my referral link. However, every time someone buys something on Amazon using that link, I get a little kickback and it does help keep things going around here at Starwalker Studios. So I want to thank you again for downloading and listening to Game Master's Journey. I want to thank you for your support, for those of you that support the show. And for those of you that don't, please consider it. It takes time and money (laughs) and energy to make this show every week. And, you know, there are ways that you can help out that won't cost you any money. So there's really no excuse other than laziness or apathy. (laughs) So I hope that you have a chance to play your favorite RPG this week. I will be back soon with another episode of Game Master's Journey. Until then, game on. Let's go. I'm the dungeon master. I'm the dungeon master. You see me rolling dice and drumming up disaster. Dungeon master. I'm the dungeon master. Better think twice for you will the spellcaster. Welcome to my playground You better be ready to battle the baddies that I gotta make now Fool, do you know who you're talking to? I control this kingdom, the king, your vermin on my shoe You think you'll prove your worth? I'd like to see you try Catch your fits with the hope that you're rolling a number that's higher than mine So welcome to my earth, I see you find it fine I see that you're missing, you should have been putting with all of the skills of divine Claiming victory, take a look at my history Play the books with no trickery You hope you can spit at me, you're always end in misery Don't fail the delivery, I hope you show ability inside my game of DNT. Dungeon Master, I'm the Dungeon Master You see me rolling dice and drumming up disaster Dungeon Master, I'm the Dungeon Master Better think twice for you will a spellcaster Dungeon Master, I'm the Dungeon Master You see me rolling dice and drumming up disaster Dungeon Master, I'm the Dungeon Master Better think twice for you will a spellcaster Suicide to deny a dungeon master's will Unless you're vying for guys up with intent to kill I've been trying to kick it back and keep chilling Before I realize the DM is the real villain Before you turn the corner, boy, you better roll stealth Because you're hurting and flirting with death on tap health Watching your step for the danger of death Tripping on wise, the traps have been set Every shadow a possible threat Pain is imbued in every breath This dude's a psycho, he's a sadist Yeah, that's true I dropped two of your buddies just in the last room Is that an ogre? The cleric's down the wizard too It's game over We all dance to the master's I'm tune I'm the dungeon master I'm the dungeon master You see me rolling dice and drumming up disaster 
dungeon master, I'm the dungeon master Better think twice, do you rogue a spell caster? Dungeon master, I'm the dungeon master You see me rolling dice and plumbing a disaster Dungeon master, I'm the dungeon master Better think twice, do you rogue a spell caster? I leave you fighting orcs, trolls and goblins Maybe a basilisk for a rug smothering I leash your hell of skeletons, maybe a devil Almanaga, a combo mix, Hagrid, I throw another god on me Unleash the dragon, you'll be burnt alive What's your vibe? Travelling into the battle ring You know what's happening, it is your time to die Release the crack and attacking your guys Back into where you reside Hope you're not cracking under the endless tide Dungeon master, I'm the dungeon master You see me rolling dice, I'm drumming up disaster Dungeon master, I'm the dungeon master Better think twice, be you rogue or spell caster Dungeon master, I'm the dungeon master You see me rolling dice, I'm drumming up disaster Dungeon master, I'm the dungeon master Better think twice, be you rogue or spell caster Dungeon master, I'm the dungeon master You see me rolling dice, I'm drumming up disaster Dungeon master, I'm the dungeon master Better think twice, be you rogue or spell caster This has been a Starwalker Studios production, your source for quality gaming and hobby podcasts. This episode's music, courtesy of Cloudwalker, Transboy, Renfield, Stanko, and Ish. See the show notes for more details at starwalkerstudios.com slash Game Master's Journey.